Good morning, members, members of the public. You're all very welcome here this morning. Um, I'd like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet and will be capable of repeated viewing. The whole of the meeting will be filmed except where, where there are confidential or exempt items. This is rather long, members and members of the public, but I've got to read it all through. Any member of the public who attends a meeting and objects to being filmed should have advised the committee clerk. Is there anybody here that uh, objects? No? If you make a representation to the meeting, you will be deemed by the council to have consented to being filmed. By entering this room, you are also consenting to being filmed by the council and to the possibility use of those images and sound recordings for webcasting and or for training purposes. The council, members of the public and press may record, film, photograph or broadcast this meeting when the public and press are not lawfully excluded. In accordance with the council's plan and charter, members of the public are not permitted to communicate, whether verbally or in writing, with members of the committee during the course of the meeting, including any adjournments. If a member of the committee is approached by a member of the public, then they must immediately draw it to my attention and also to the attention of the legal advisor present. Eh? Good morning, Chairman. That's me. Thank you. If a member of the public attempts to communicate with a member of the committee, then they may be asked to leave the meeting. Finally, can members and officers please ensure that you press the microphone for speaking and turn off when you have finished? Uh, oh yes. I'll now hand over to... Rob to read us the health and safety. Thank you, Chair. We'll try and get this organised a little bit better next time. So, just for reference, the toilets are situated outside the meeting room opposite the stairs. Cold water is available in the breakout area outside the meeting room. And if the fire alarm should sound, please leave via the exit signs um, and meet on Ipswich Town Football Club training pitch and do not re-enter the building until you are told it is safe to do so. And please could you turn off all mobile phones or switch them to silent. Thank you, Chair. So make sure all your phones are turned off, members. Thank you. Now we can return to the agenda. Um, first item, substitutes and apologies. Um, Councillor Jan Osborne. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Councillor Jan Osborne, subbing for Councillor Sue Ayres. Thank you very much. Councillor Davis. Yeah, Councillor Davis, substituting for Councillor Hinton. Thank you. Other than that, I think we're all present. Right, I'm just going to take this opportunity to welcome the new members of the planning committee. Um, your names will come up if you uh, speak during the course of the meeting. But I think just as a quick exercise, I'm going to ask the members just to uh, announce their names so that uh, um, you'll get used to using the uh, microphones in front of you. Uh, we'll start with Derek, Councillor Derek Davis. Yep, Councillor Derek Davis. Right. Dave Busby. Councillor Alison Owen. Lee Jameson. Lee Parker, Chair. Okay. Melanie Barrett. Zach Norman. Councillor Adrian Osborne. Councillor Jan Osborne. Thank you. I'm now going to ask the top table just to... Um, in, in, uh, Ian Dupre, Solicitor and Legal Advisor to this committee. Stephen Plum, Vice Chair. I'm Stephen Stroud. I'm the Council Strategic Projects Manager and I'm supporting the Chair and Vice Chair. Uh, oh, sorry. I thought you were going to introduce yourself there, Chair. I'll come back to that last. <laughs> Uh, Robert Carmichael, Government Support Officer. And Rob. Oh, right, OK. And uh, the other officers <coughs> along the back here, as they present papers to us, they will introduce themselves to us, OK? So that you'll know who, who they all are. And my name's Peter Bion, Chairman of the Planning Committee, and I know my colleague here, 
uh, Chief Officer of Planning, um, who's got this fancy title, but I always refer to the one sitting here as the Chief Planning Officer because he's conducting that part of the meeting this morning. So you've got that title. It's simpler and easier and people understand it. Right, we'll move on to declarations of interest. Do I have any? Councillor Barrett? Yes. Um, can I declare um, a non-pecuniary interest um, in the um, first uh, and only application today? Um, my uh, niece by marriage is an employee of the school. Thank you. Um, yeah, Chairman, the, um, indeed, this is a non-pecuniary interest. Councillor Barrett spoke to me just before the meeting. It's been properly declared. No problem with Councillor Barrett voting and speaking as normal in this meeting. Thank you very much. Are there are no others? No? Good. We'll move on. Item three is to confirm the minutes of the meeting uh, that was held on the 17th of April. Um, those members that were present, uh, hopefully you have gone through them. We'll take them page one. I know they're not numbered. So page two, if there's any problems, please stop me. Page three. Page four, page five, that's the last page. Can I have a proposed by Councillor Osborne, seconded by Councillor Parker? All those in favour, please show. That's carried by all those that were present. Thank you. Right, item four, to receive notifications of any peti petitions in accordance with the Council's petition scheme. None received, Chair. Thank you very much. Item five, site inspections. Uh, is there any site inspections being called? Uh, yes, Chairman, there are a number of site inspections. Um, the officers sat across there will, um, will come and uh, present those particular items for vote. Right, thank you. So we'll do that now then. Um, would you like the first one come forward to a microphone? This is technology. We're all getting used to it. Yeah. Good morning, members, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to present a formal site request from Councillor McCraw, the councillor for Brantham. As you will see shortly, there is a significant Have amount of... Oh, sorry, apologies. Vincent Pierce, Principal Planning Officer within the Development Management Service. Thank you. As I say, I'm here to present this formal request from Councillor McCraw. Currently, Brentham is experiencing a lot of development pressure and we have a number of large and significant applications coming up shortly and Councillor McCraw felt it right to try and secure a visit by all members of the committee for a good look around Brentham because the number of applications are scattered around the whole, whole village. So the first case in question is Brooklands Road, it'll be a reserved matters application, outline planning permission having already been granted. This is um, for some 288 dwellings. Councillor McCraw feels that because it's a complicated site, it's, it's on a significant slope, adjoins an existing residential estate, it has caused significant interest within the, the village Obviously, we do now have some new councillors on the committee who wouldn't have been uh, available at the time of the outline. Planning permission, mm -hmm. Councillor McCraw feels it will be helpful for those members to see the, the site in context. And he also wants to be sure that there's public debate around the extent to which the reserve matters accord with the outline planning permission. So in a nutshell, we have uh, Brantham alongside the River Stour. <coughs> The area edged blue is the application site. You'll see 
To the south of that is a large, largely now vacant industrial area. Some significant landscape. We have the AOMB to the east, area of outstanding natural beauty. The site itself is currently wild. Um, to the right is a magnificent historic decoy pond that will form part of the proposal in terms of public open space. The key feature here is, however, the estate at the top of the slide is on land that's much higher than the land to the south where the factory is. There's a significant slope and trying to get the development to fit nicely onto that uh, geography has proved challenging, but we think there's a, a good scheme to present to you on the 19th. So it's coming up very shortly. So were you minded to do a site visit? We haven't got much time to fit it in. The layout, but that'll obviously be shown to you in a lot more detail. And you can see the area on the right where the decoy pond, so there's a significant amount of public open space involved in this proposal. That's the application site, residential to the north, as I say, industrial to the south. Brentham is one of our key regeneration areas, um, so there are all sorts of policy issues we would need to explore. But I think it is important for members to see the whole site in context. There's a quick shot to show some of the terrain. We have the high land, there are a number of valleys, obviously there are all sorts of tributaries running into the Stour, and the decoy pond is that area in blue, magnificent tranquil area. And again, a more close-up view of the estate. The second uh, site that Councillor McCraw would like you to visit is Brentham Place, Church Lane. We're currently engaged in uh, considerable dialogue with the, the applicants. We're hoping to bring this to you in the near future. Um, as I say, discussion is ongoing and we're hoping to see a, a scheme amended in the near future. Again, at the moment, this is another in interesting site, very heavily wooded with a significant building in, in the middle and this is a, an application to try and scatter a number of detached houses within the woodland setting. Potentially an exciting scheme but obviously within the context of Brentham has cons caused considerable discussion. Sorry, Sorry is that point of order? a moment um, because I think I need to declare another conflict of interest because uh, I think I'm... Do you wish to have a word with the, the solicitor? No, I hadn't realised this was coming forward, but I think I, I know the owner of this property. You simply know the owner, Councillor, and that, that's a non-pecuniary interest which can be recorded and declared, and no problem with continuing. <laughs> OK, that's noted. Thank you. Thank you. These are the four key areas that Councillor McCraw would like you to take in, were you minded to, to do a site visit. I have my colleague Jack who wishes to talk about the, a third application site, if we can just bring Jack to the, yep. the chair. I'll disappear. Thank you very much. Could you just introduce yourself, Jack? Good morning, members. Um, Jack Wilkinson, Principal Planning Officer. Um, as Vince has alluded to, um, there's a site towards the north um, that Councillor McCraw would like us to uh, conduct a site visit for. Um, it's as depicted by the yellow dot. Um, it's to the south of Slough Road. It's for 65 units, um, complete with affordable housing, landscaping, access, um, and various other features which are, as I say, ongoing um, in terms of discussion. It is an outline application with access, um, as depicted by the uh, yellow outline to the north. Vince has already mentioned uh, the land tends to slope uh, and the gradient falls down towards the southern portion of Brantham. So we are in quite an elevated uh, patch. As shown by the red line outline, um, agricultural land at present um, it presents as a natural infill towards the northern portion. Um, to the west is open countryside um, and hopefully we'll, if members are inclined to visit on site, you will see the open nature. There is uh, a link towards the south of the site through to Slough Road, and then you've got the um, access along the north with residential to the uh, eastern side. This is an indicative layout. As you can see, 
the units as proposed um, with open space and landscaping. I'll hand you over to Rob. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, well, members, I think we'll take these three on block. Um, Councillor Parker, are you proposing it? Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Busby, do you wish to comment? Well, I, I, I think with the cumulative effect of all of these uh, applications, I think it's important that we do get to see the whole area. And it, to me, it's a good opportunity. We ought to be doing more of this, where we know that there's going to be a number of applications in a place. Go and see the whole place rather than just the one side. Yes, uh, you've often remarked on that sort of uh, approach, so I'm pleased you've seconded it. Uh, right, members, all those in favour of the site inspection, please show. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. Would you like to return? We'll go on to the next one. So we have another site inspection request. Libby. Yeah. We're just getting the, the um, paperwork online so that we can point it out to members. So just bear with us. I think we're there. Elizabeth Flood, Principal Planning <coughs> Officer. Uh, this application is for land west of Low Street, Glemsford, and it's an application for 101 dwellings and 35 retirement living apartments. Uh, it's been called for the site visit by Councillor Plum, and there's also some um, response from Councillor Holt. I don't know if you yep. Yep. want to read that out. Do you want to carry on while they find them? No, You've got it, good. So, Chair, there's a comment from Councillor Holt um, with regards to the application. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today to get those across. Um, so, he just asked a quick note for these to pass, pass on to the committee to take into consideration when making a site visit. Um, he, he has asked that please could members walk footpath 41 and to point out the bus stop. 400 and 350 metres away to the proposed site. Please view the inadequate and poor access to the site on a bend and slope adjacent to the 30 mile an hour sign. This is my opinion, as some, someone that has lived in the village for 54 years, it's not suitable. No footpath from the site access into the village. Low Street to Church Gate and the visual impact and topography of the site. The heritage assets and the landscape um, associated with the Grade 1 listed church in the conservation area and the special landscape area. Um, so Councillor Holt has asked me to read those out to the committee and they will also be shared if um, and pointed out on the site visit if members do choose to go on one. Thank you very much. Elizabeth? Okay, so it's uh, been called because it's a major application within the village. You can see um, and it's got impacts on various heritage assets. So that's the red line site plan. See, um, you can see it's not particularly clear, but um, the church is the green building um, just to the south east of the site. And then Monks Hall is um, the building in red to the north east of the site. Um, see that on the aerial photograph um, that's the layout and then just quickly just so you can see the site is just past here on the left this is pictures from the church um, and there are a couple of footpaths that go through the site that which um, so the site is here on the right which would be worth uh, looking at if you were to choose to go on a site visit you can see this is 
um, from the site looking back towards the church. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right. Um, members have heard that. Uh, Councillor Plump? Summed up very well. Summed, okay. Um, do you wish to have a site inspection? Um, right. Proposed by Councillor Busby and seconded by Councillor Parker. All those in favour, please show. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. So we will have a site inspections and they will be done on Wednesday the 12th of June. Oh, we've got another one, have we? Oh, I didn't know that. Right. Uh, we'll have number three. Mark Brands. Sorry? Mark Brands is the opposite. Oh, Mark Brands. Okay. You'll have to go. Okay, I'll give it to you for today. Sorry, good morning, men members. I'm Mark Brands, Planning Officer, Baby Mid Suffolk District Council. Uh, got a planning application out to the rear of Roslyn House down Duke Street at Hintlesham. Uh, there's been a petition received for this uh, and it's been called to committee because it's been deemed controversial locally and called for a site visit by Councillor Busby. So, this is the site, the proposal to the erection of two dwellings, uh, solar panels. Uh, improved access, uh, which will be to the rear of uh, Roslyn on Duke Street. Uh, this is the, uh, I say the brown line indicates the built-up area boundary, so it will be outside of that and going against the prevailing uh, form of development down Duke Street. Uh, this is an area of the sites. Yeah, so this is the proposed layout. Uh, so I'll say uh, to the, there'll be some solar panels which will be to the rear of Roslyn House in the middle of the site. Uh, plot one will be the larger dwelling to the south and plot two will be the dwelling to the north. These are the proposed plans for the uh, plot one, the dwelling to the south. And this is a proposed dwelling for pl uh, plot two to the north. Uh, this is the associated outbuilding and uh, garage for plot one to the south. And this is the garage outbuilding for plot two in the north. And these are the sections uh, of the site. So this is an aerial schem schematic the uh, applicant has submitted as part of the application. Um, it has got curtilage on three sides and an established boundary uh, to the west. Uh, this is the uh, tree survey. It uh, these are some photographs uh, of the sites. This is Rosslyn House, the front and rear. Uh, this is the southern part of the site. It's 0.64 hectares in total, uh, the whole site. Uh, this is the towards the boundary to the west, the agricultural land to the, beyond. Uh, this is a few on the left side is the um, neighbouring properties along Duke Street. And this is the plot uh, to the north, uh, more, uh, more contained, I'll say, and the bottom right is sort of the ind indicative area where the solar panels will be placed um, to the rear of Roslyn House. Um, thank you. Sorry, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, members, you've seen all the photographs. Do you, uh, uh, do you wish to go on a site inspection, or are you happy that the photographs can tell the story when it comes back to planning committee? Councillor Busby. Yes, Chair. I mean, I, as I requested this to come uh, to Committee for a site visit, I probably ought to explain why, because it looks relatively simple compared yeah. to the others. Um, and that, I think that is the issue. It might look relatively simple, but there are issues concerning this planning application. There's been a large amount of interest, shall I say, locally, not all necessarily down to the applications. Mm -hmm. um, the site, it, it's, it, it's a fairly big site for two extra houses uh, and they are single storey and therefore a lot of the um, opposition may be um, not so great in terms that you're not going to be able to see them from the road etc. 
There's also a very peculiar village boundary, which you see seems to go round the site, after the site, rather than including the site. And again, I think that's worth taking on board. Um, and there's, there'll be an interesting design. So I think it's worth seeing. And as, as I was saying, as part of the, uh, the view, we could take in that road down in Hindlesham because there's a lot of development on Duke Street and there's potentially going to be a lot more. And this is one of those issues where you're do you accept pure linear? Um, uh, I think that's more of a debate in the council chamber, but uh, I think your point is taken. Um, so, uh, is that a proposal? Well, yeah, obviously, I'm saying that. Well, that's what you said, do I? Thank you. Do I have a second up? Uh, Councillor Davis, do you wish to comment or are you happy? No. Right, members, you've, you've heard the views. All those in favour of a site inspection, please show. That's carried. Anyone against? Thank you. Oh, right, thank you. Uh, right, I think that is now all the site inspections. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to come in very briefly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, just to come in very briefly, as there's obviously quite a lot of site visits there, if members are happy, um, I will obviously put the most pressing ones on the agenda first for, for members to visit because some of them might not come to committee straight away in the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. If members are happy for me to go away and sort out the dates with regards to that yeah. um, and send around them once we have confirmed when they will be going to committee. Yeah, but there will be one next Wednesday on the 12th, won't there? I yeah. believe, yes. Yes, because the, uh, not the other ones, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the intention to try and do them all. Yeah. So it'll be a 9.30 start. Right, we'll now members move to item number six, which is plan applications for determination today. Um, you've all got your papers on page seven. Case officer in this case is Alex Scott. Uh, over to you to take us through it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alex Scott, uh, presenting officer. I'm principal planning officer for uh, Baby District Council. And um, the application today is uh, a site at uh, Old Buckingham Hall School, in Brettenham Park in Brettenham. The yep. application seeks full planning permission for the erection of seven new dwellings following the demolition of two existing bungalows on the site. Therefore, we have a, a net gain of five additional dwellings. The application is supported by a legal agreement in the interest of securing funds resulting from the sale of the dwellings to be used in the repair and upkeep of existing school buildings at Old Buckingham Hall, which is Grade 2 star listed, so one of our most important buildings. The current proposal is a result of pre-application advice and negotiation undertaken by your planning and heritage officers dating back to November 2017. As stated in the papers, a panel of members visited the site in January 2019. So here we have a uh, location of the site uh, within the district. Uh, you can just see the uh, the red. Uh, sorry, I don't have a cursor here. Didn't expect that, but yeah, the um, oh, the laser pointer. Oh, so we go right. <laughs> just in this location. Thank you, Robert. Um, this is a an aerial photograph of the of the general area and uh, Bretton Park itself in this location. Sorry, this one. Sorry, Bretton Park in this location. Uh, the village of Brettenham itself, centred around here where the, uh, the church is and linear pattern along uh, Bury Road and the street, uh, Thought Maru, the neighbouring village, off in this location. And this is uh, zooming in on Brettenham Park itself. Uh, here we have the school buildings um, and the access driveway to that. We have two gate lodges here which are grade two listed. There's another 
grade two listed building on the opposite side of the road at Pound Farm, um, an existing dwelling opposite the site which is not listed. And the general site is in this location. I'll zoom in a bit more on the next slide. So uh, the site relates to two existing bungalows here, Cedar Lodge and Cedar Lodge and Claremont House. And we also have a modern dwelling here at Dukes Hill. Um, that was a replacement dwelling granted in 2015. The existing bungalows date back to the 1960s and uh, planning permission was granted originally in 1962. So here we have a uh, constraints map of the area and um, the, uh, the green areas are tree preservation order belts, trees protected by tree preservation orders. The purple area is the extent of the village conservation area. The uh, village settlement or built up area boundary uh, terminates here. The site is in this location. And the, uh, the colored buildings indicate the listed buildings. You have the grade two star old Buckingham Hall. The grade two <coughs> listed gatehouses and grade two listed pound farm on the opposite side of the road. Uh, this is a, a site plan, a larger scale, and zooming into a more detailed scale. And if you can just make out the, uh, the dotted lines, that's the location of the existing bungalows to be removed. And uh, all dwellings, save for plot seven, would be built um, on the existing garden area of uh, the two bungalows. And you've got about uh, a 20 meter intrusion into, uh, into Bretman Park itself, as set out in the report. Uh, this is the uh, proposed visibility splays uh, for the improved access to the uh, resultant eight dwellings. Uh, that's been assessed and approved by the local highway authority at Suffolk County Council. Uh, here we have the front elevations of all the buildings proposed. So seven new dwellings, but uh, four buildings, plots two and three. And then again at plots four, five, and six would be within the same building. These are the elevations of plot one. And the floor plans. So we have a, uh, a four bedroom detached dwelling proposed here. Plots two and three. And these will both be three bedroom dwellings. Plots four, five, and six. And I don't know if you can make that out. They, they will actually be uh, three bedroom dwellings apiece, these three. Plot seven, and we have a, a five bedroom dwelling proposed there, detached again. Uh, these are roof plans of all four buildings and the, uh, the cart lodges proposed. And there we have the elevations of the cart lodges. This is to plots two and three. And then at uh, plots four and seven, this is a proposed uh, street scene elevation showing ridge heights, ridge height comparisons and taking into account site level changes along, uh, along Bury Road. And uh, the main point of this is to show that the ridge heights would be no higher than uh, the existing neighboring dw dwelling at, uh, at Dukes Hill. On to some photographs for you. These are the listed uh, gatehouses to the drive to Old Buckingham Hall. And here we have a street scene uh, elevation, the existing access to the existing bungalows and Dukes Hill in this location. That will be improved by way of the permission, if you're minded to, uh, to grant. Um, this is the dwelling immediately opposite the site, Step Cottage. 
the listed uh, building opposite at Pound Farm. Uh, this is Duke's Hill, a replacement dwelling granted in 2015. An existing bungalow to be removed at Cedar Lodge. And then again at Claremont House, also to be removed as part of the proposal. So this is a, a view from the parkland to the rear. Uh, the larger dwelling here is the neighbouring dwelling at Dutes Hill. You can make out uh, Cedar Lodge. And just moving round to the left from that photograph. Um, Cedar Lodge again. Claremont House actually obscured by way of um, the existing tree bund on the site. And again, moving around to the left slightly and moving in, you can probably make out the uh, listed gatehouses. And uh, for reference, plot seven would be in approximately this location. And I'm just turning the camera around there and looking back towards old Buckingham Hall school buildings. And uh, an additional item uh, for you as submitted by the applicant, um, paragraph 2.11 of the report should include the raking out and repair of brickwork um, to inside face wall of the walled garden as part of the uh, list of uh, improvements and repairs to the building. They're looking to, uh, and we look to secure that by way of um, the legal agreement as well. Right, well, that concludes the officer presentation. Um, as per the report, our recommendation to you is for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, right, members, we now have members of the public wishing to speak. Uh, Parish Council, Paul Bendel, uh, if you'd like to come forward. Sir, you have three minutes in which to address the committee. Perhaps you'd remain seated or standing and I'll see if there's any questions from members of the committee to you afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Bendel, Chairman of Breton Parish Council's Planning Subcommittee. Breton Parish Council and the great majority of residents object to this proposal. Not because we object to residential developments per se, we welcome and support appropriately scaled developments that sensibly integrate in the existing settlement pattern <coughs> and address local needs. We have supported more than 12 residential development applications, including six new builds in the past 16 months. Our objections to this proposal are that in the context of Bretton's size and infrastructure, it is disproportionately large scale, relatively high value estate development, partly on a greenfield site and well outside the village built up area boundary. It's unsympathetic to the existing village structure. It would replace two low impact single story properties on an essentially <coughs> rural site with comparatively large mass high value houses that would sit obtrusively into and further erode existing greenfield parkland in the conservation area. In March this year, the site was reduced to below the threshold for affordable housing, late in the application process and without any community involvement. There has been little, if any, meaningful engagement with the community by the applicant to assess the existing housing mix in the village or any local housing gaps and needs. It is unclear to us how this proposal fulfills sustainable development policies. Bretonham has little infrastructure, no shops or facilities, no safe pedestrian access to the site, and limited public transport, and significant increased vehicle trips would result. We believe the applicant overstates its status as a major local employer. Its current nexus with the village and connection with the local community is similarly overstated in our view. We do not accept that the proposal gives any genuine public benefit to the local community and we remain sceptical of whether, and if so, how this can be implemented. A significant majority of supporting commentators do not live in the local area, would be unaffected by the development and are connected to the applicant. Whereas 100% of the objecting commentators do live in the local area, they do remain supportive of smaller, more sympathetic developments that integrate into the village built up area, but strongly object to a housing state which we believe rides roughshod over planning constraints on established greenfield parkland outside the village boundary and in the conservation area. We also remain unclear how this proposal passes the enabling development test. Listed building fabric maintenance by the applicant should, in our view, be seeming, but seemingly cannot be serviced from surfaces generated by the applicant's business model. And we remain concerned that if approved, this proposal will set a precedent for further development by the applicant or others outside, oh sorry, beg your pardon, inside the conservation area and well outside the village core. 
And in conclusion, we respectfully request that the application is refused. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Members, have you any questions? Uh, it, sorry, if you can just remain for one moment, there might be some questions to you. Members, do you have any questions for the sp last speaker? Uh, Councillor Barrett? I just, just have one uh, question. Yes. Um, it is unusual to see um, people supporting an application in the numbers that uh, are being uh, uh, recorded. Um, what, what leads you to your conclusion that they're not residents? We have looked at the um, commentators, we have looked at where they live, we've looked at exactly their relationship with the school, and we have taken um, informed advice that the majority of them, and we know this to be a fact, are not residents. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Parker, your question? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. <coughs> Bendel. Um, Given that the principle of development already exists at that location, is the Parish Council's objection to any development at all, or just this development? Of Sorry, Mr. Bentley, if I can just clarify, in that position, please. Given the application that we've received, it is our objection to the application as seen. We have not seen any other applications, and I believe that, and I can't speak on behalf of the Parish Council, but we would be sympathetic to a reduced application. It's the size and scale that we object to in the conservation area and outside the village built up area boundary. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, members? No. Okay, thank you very much, sir. You can return to your seat. Uh, we'll move on. We have the applicant agent, uh, David Griffiths and Ed Edward Gittin. <coughs> I don't know if you're coming together or separately. Just <coughs> one thing. You sir, are you David or Ed Edward? Oh, you're both coming. Right, you have three minutes between you. Uh, we you can either stop at halfway or are you going to do all the speaking? I'll do all the speaking. And then yeah. the pair of you may take questions. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. When you're ready. Good morning, Mr. Cham uh, Mr. Chairman and members. My name is David Griffiths. I'm the headmaster of Old Buckingham Hall School. Old Buckingham Hall was founded in 1862 and relocated to Brettenham Park in 1956. Since then, we have taken great care of the estate as its guardians. The upkeep of a listed building and the glorious setting of Brettenham Park make great demands on the school's financial resources. We are nevertheless proud to be the trustees of this historic site, but we must now plan ahead to safeguard both the heritage assets and the future of the school. The application before you has been designed to strengthen the position of the school via a sympathetic scheme on previously developed land on the periphery of the park. The school is a charity and does not seek to make a profit. All surpluses are therefore reinvested. However, to give members an idea of the scale of financial commitments faced by the school, this academic year alone, we have spent close to £150,000 on refurbishment and maintenance, and none of this has been on new facilities. Despite this level of investment, we are aware that the infrastructure of the historic house and the landscape requires continuing works to protect its intrinsic and aesthetic qualities. The redevelopment of this small parcel of land will enable us to undertake S106 works listed in the officer report, works which we enthusiastically want to proceed with. Without this boost in revenue, these are not achievable, our maintenance costs will escalate and the overall condition of the buildings and parklands will deteriorate. We must be pragmatic, but to maintain the heritage of the site, compromises must be found, otherwise it is not sustainable or prudent stewardship. As a long-established local business, we are a significant employer within a rural setting, utilising a local workforce and the local supply chain. We would respectfully ask members to support the school and the professional recommendations of your planning and heritage officers by focusing on the long-term and widespread benefits that can be derived from enabling development to secure the long-term future of Buckingham Hall. Moreover, the proposed scheme will financially underpin a landscape strategy for the parkland which will maintain and enhance this historic setting. As a school, we have a national reputation for excellence. However, schools do not stand still, and to maintain our attraction to the best teachers and parents of prospective pupils, we need to upgrade our facilities, some of which are inadequate. With no endowment or central funding, we need to raise revenues in other ways. This scheme will allow us to begin a development phase of the school that will include covering the swimming pool, building new staff accommodation, and ultimately building a sports hall. 
These facilities will provide a community asset and the governors and myself are committed to ensuring our facilities can be used and enjoyed by the local community as much as possible. I would like you to be under no illusion that this development is anything but vital for the future sustainability of the heritage value of Breton and Park and its continuation as a nationally respected school. We believe that the application before you delivers this, which can only be a good thing for the park, for Bretonham and for Baver. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. I don't see members have got questions. Uh, I've got one. Uh, you, you said that um, uh, the facilities that this, this development would help uh, pay for in the long run, they could become available to the local people in the area, is that correct? That is correct. We have um, a number of facilities which are or have in the past been used by the local community. For example, we have uh, the Brettonham Cricket Club plays at, um, at the school. Um, and have done for over 100 years. We have um, the swimming pool, which is currently <coughs> uncovered and is used by local swimming groups whenever available. We would like to make that a, a 12 month facility, um, so that's part of it. Thank you, I think that's answered my question. Members, do you have any questions? Uh, Councillor Jemison. Uh, hi. Have you explored other ways of um, increasing your funding? We have the school, um, this is very much like the farming community, needs to diversify to, to raise income. Um, so we, we have increased our letting income through the course of this year, for example, throughout the entire summer holidays this year. We have lets in from two um, other schools groups, which is generating income for us. Um, we're also looking at diversifying other types of income as well, whether that be um, potentially in the future as, as a wedding venue, um, but those things are still under consideration. However, um, the level of investment that those areas bring in, bring in is, is insignificant in comparison to the potential sale of this land with planning. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Councillor Busby. It's, it's an obvious attraction and a simple way of gaining money to solve your problems. But will we see you here in another four years asking for another chunk of land for urgent money to keep this place going? Um, I'm not sure whether that's really a valid question. It's, we have to deal, as you know very well, Councillor Puzz, with what's in front of us. Um, he has mentioned that there is possibilities that there could be improvements. I'm but happy to answer the question in terms of the finances of the school. The school okay, is very keep it brief. financially run. Uh, we we uh, have made a surplus over recent years um, and we're projecting into the future to make a continuing surplus as well. Um, however, this is a boost that, that we need in terms of um, intrinsic and important works at the site. There is no future planning at all for, for further sale of land. It's just not, not something that's been discussed in the slightest. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Busby. Um, one of the uh, objections uh, from the Parish Council was size and scale. If we could find something that was more modest in size and scale, would you still be prepared to put that forward as an alternative? Or are you wedded to this particular application? Um, I think if we're unsuccessful in this application, then the governing body and myself would have to discuss a future way forward. Um, so it's not something that I could comment on at the moment, um, but, but there is every potential that it could be. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Barrett. Thank you. Um, I think the uh, person from the Parish Council said uh, they uh, disputed the number of employees uh, at the school, and I think it states that there's about 100. Can you provide a, an update on that? Yes, sir. we have uh, approximately 95 employees at the school, um, and we have done some work with Oxford <coughs> Economics, RS Academics, and IAPS, which is our overseeing body in, in the last year. Um, the, the employees that we have are largely based in the Baver district. Um, we think that we employ another six or seven people through the supply chain, um, both directly and indirectly. And we also estimate that we, we contribute about 0.29% of GDP for the, the county as well. Um, so we, we do not have over 100 employees, but we bounce around the 90 to 95 mark. Thank you. Any other questions, members? Councillor Davis. Um, you will have seen the objections from Historic England. Um, how, how would you um, counter their, their argument about the disruption and the, um, the harm that it will cause to the local character? And also, um, as part of the policy, you would need to demonstrate uh, how you would enhance or um, make a distinctive posit positive contribution to the whole of Breton and not just the school. How would you do that? First, Ted Gissons, who's our agent for, for this. Um, Councillor Davis, um, I'll allow that question to be asked because he's quite obviously 
got an answer, but the heritage officer will be speaking later to us. So I'd like you to pick that point up in, do, uh, in your presentation. Thank you. Yeah, yes, I know that it's very similar. Uh, okay. Yes. Right. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, um, clearly um, the views of historic England are, are very important. Uh, essentially, it's, it's a subjective judgment as to the degree of harm or impact the development has on the park. We worked from day one uh, with uh, heritage officer, uh, your heritage officer, and um, took stock of the situation on site and found close agreement with him that the minimal, there was minimal visual impact um, of the development, having regard to the existing development on the site, that it is still largely a, a, a developed site as it stands, and that only a very small part of the undeveloped parkland is included in the scheme. And having regard to the existing structural landscape on the edge of the site and the landscaping proposals that we devised to mitigate any visual intrusion on the park, um, the heritage officer uh, from a very early stage was convinced that um, the development would not have any significant harm to the setting of the listed buildings or to the parkland itself. Um, so I accept there is a, a difference of view, but the heritage officer has looked at this at very close quarters, which I don't think historic England have. And the historic, um, your heritage officer um, has, as stated in the report, um, endorsed the scheme right from day one, in, in, based on the technical information that we provided. Thank you. Th th thank you. We do have the heritage officer in the room, so we can get them to comment on this when we go into open debate. Okay. Um, any other questions? No? Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, the ward member, Councillor Lindsay, uh, was here earlier, but unfortunately couldn't stay. Um, but he has handed a, a note to uh, be read out, so I'm going to ask uh, Rob here to read it out, or the relevant parts, please. Thank you, Chair. So, this is a development outside the built-up boundary within a conservation area in a village currently classified as hinterland. Bresham has a church and a village hall that, that village hall, and that's, that's it as far as amenities. There is just one scheduled bus to bury a week, so this development would be entirely car dependent. The development is, of, is on historic parkland, and I presume it is of historic nature, nature of this parkland, that it is the reason it is included in the conservation area. Yes, there were three bungalows built there in the 60s for school staff. I doubt whether such applications would have, been one, would have won approval today. They did harm the historic parkland and historic meaning of that parkland. This proposal will encroach still further on historic parkland and its impact will be far greater than the two modest bungalows that they will replace. The school has removed plot eight from the original plan, but plot seven still is still an encroachment outside the curtilage of the bungalows. Further into the historic parkland, increasing the harm that was done in the 60s. At the moment, it is still possible to walk up to those bungalows as I have done earlier this year while door knocking and feel that they are part of Brettonham Park and historic landscape. They're relatively unobtrusive and hidden in what feels like a mini woodland on the edge of the big park. The new proposals will inevitably be not as well hidden given that they are two storey and there will be seven houses rather than two. They will require greater clear space, more driveways, parking spaces, carports and associated paraphernalia of a car dependent estate. Because of all this, the only policy on which the developer can rely for building the five extra houses rather than the just two replacements is the exceptional one of enabling development. This is what English heritage say about the enabling development. Enabling development is normally a last resort as it is an inefficient means of providing funding. As it is akin to a type of public funding, proposals should be subject to similar levels of scrutiny. The test they recommend is that enabling development should only be allowed if your historic house is falling down to such an extent that even after you've paid for repairs, the building's new market value does not recover the cost of repairs. The school has provided no evidence of building's value 
nor costs of the repairs needed to the fabric. Initially, it seems the school said the money was needed to put a roof over the swimming pool and refurbish the squash court. Later, after it seems later, after it seems planners pointed out that the importance of enabling development being seen to protect the historic building. They came up with a list of repairs to the actual historic fabric. To me, they amount to not much more than ongoing maintenance, repointing of brickwork, some mending of the flashing of the roof, and so on. Old Buckingham Hall is a private business. It relies on the prestige of its historic landscape and buildings to attract its clients, and it ought to be able to fund the upkeep of these buildings via the fees it charges its clients. It should not be allowed to harm one, of part, one part of Suffolk's heritage and historic landscape to fund ongoing repairs to another part. This is cutting off, the, cutting off its nose to spite its face. Once we give way on this principle, there is no end to it. The next time repair work is needed to Old Buckin, Buckingham Hall, we can expect another application to take another piece of the historic parkland landscape. Therefore, I uh, urge you to refuse this application. That's from Councillor Lindsay. And just to add um, that, as you mentioned, Chair, Councillor Lindsay was here earlier but did have to leave, and we would have put that in the table papers if he had said that anyway, to if there was any concern regarding that statement. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I would normally would <coughs> ask questions of the ward member, but uh, uh, as he's not here, it's very difficult. But um, if there's any comments you wish to pick up from that, then we can do that in the general debate. And perhaps the officers... Uh, can uh, respond to that in due course. Is there anything that you would respond to in what you've just heard at all? Um, not, not really, really Chair. Okay. Um, yeah. No, that's no, fine. No, Thank no. you. Um, right, members, that's all the public speakers done. Uh, so we'll go open to debate and Councillor Dave, as you have indicated, you wish to speak. Yeah, so it's just a bit of clarification for me. Apologies, I probably should know the answer already, but can you give me a bit of advice about enabling development in terms of what our policies are or what the national policy very is? Very good question. Um, is that your department? Or? I, can, yeah. I, I okay. can pick this up briefly. I mean, um, to be honest, my knowledge of it will probably be less than that of our own heritage officer who's here, but effectively we don't have we'll a particular as well in a moment. yes we, we don't have a particular policy that covers enabling development but historic england does set out what it considers to be and i think the test is probably quite a high bar to meet um, and in the circumstances here i think it's probably acknowledged that that test isn't met nevertheless i, I think officers do recognize that you know the capital receipts involved in the disposal of the land to go to development um, or, or the sale of the development will be divested into the support of that listed building and that of itself is a compelling public benefit that warrants due weighting in the planning, uh, planning uh, balance. Thank you. I'm going to ask the Heritage Officer if you'd like to carry on from that point. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. The phrase enabling development as used by Historic England is specifically, is very specific and, and quite discreetly framed. Uh, and since Historic England changed their requirements for enabling development and, and produced an enormous tome on the subject probably about 10 years ago now. I, my experience is no one involves themselves with it because it's so complex. And so from the very start of this case, I made it clear to the applicants and, and to the planners and various people, I was concerned not to call it enabling development because it would not meet the strict tests that English Heritage well, now Historic England set out. So it is development that helps to facilitate work to the school, but it is not enabling in the strict sense of the, the, the phrase as used by Historic England. Uh, thank you very much for that. And just to point out that that wasn't me speaking there, that was the heritage officer. <laughs> uh, uh, Councillor Davis. So a little bit more help, please. How yeah. much weight do we give this? Because obviously Councillor uh, Lindsay's m made quite a, um, a point of it. So how much do we, do, do we as a committee um, use, use what, what was said? I think... Well, ultimately, that, that, that's your, your choice as the decision takers here. I mean, clearly, um, heritage is one of those particular matters and considerations that 
is of great importance. And you know, obviously, if there's harm to a heritage asset, that warrants a considerable weighting and importance in the balance. The corollary, of course, is that if there's something there that's going to support the long-term um, you know, vitality of that building and maintain its significance or improve it or better enhance it, then that too warrants you know, a particular and important weighting in the balance too. And officers consider here that where that development will go to that cause and can be secured by legal agreement, that's quite an important consideration that, that warrants, you know, as I say, due, due weighting in the balance. Notwithstanding that across the, the, the rest of the issues involved, um, the tensions with individual policies that are noted are not particularly significant when looking at the balance as a whole. Uh, Councillor, Os uh, Councillor Jan Osborne. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I have three questions. Would you like me to take them on bulk or separately? Uh, uh, one at a time. Right, my first one is that although I appreciate that the criteria isn't met to provide affordable housing in required to the site of the size, the size of the site, sorry, and that it's under 10 units, but I'd like to know if it would it's disappointing to see that there's not an element of at least one unit of affordable housing. Thank you. Can you answer that? Um, well, uh, as per the, uh, the current MPPF, um, to provide affordable housing, it needs to be considered to be major development. And um, that would be one of two things, as per my understanding. Um, the site would need to be over half a hectare in, um, in scale and over um, uh, 10 dwellings. So um, as this uh, proposal is, is for less than that, it's a net increase of uh, five dwellings only, and the site is um, under, uh, under uh, 0.5 of a hectare. Um, our hands are really tied. Um, we, we can't insist on that. Thank you. Your second question? Disappointing, but I, I accept the decision. Um, also, on page 12, on the Parish Council's um, comments, it's got, we do not consider the proposal would meet a proven local need and consider no analysis has been carried out in this respect. Have we got evidence of an analysis being carried out on the need? Uh, no, no analysis on the need. That wasn't part of the, um, uh, the supporting information with the proposal. Um, as per their requirements, um, if, if Stephen could uh, elaborate a bit more. Well, I think you know, we do have a policy that requires um, what, being, what is being put forward to meet you know, identified needs in the district. Obviously, in the absence of any evidence, that's difficult to pin down whether this satisfies it or not. Um, I mean, what is, the, what is the mix being proposed, Alex? Is that listed in the report in terms of the scale uh, of the dwellings? The, the units in terms of units. bedroom yes, numbers? What is that? Sorry. Which um, okay, a breakdown of the mix. You have uh, one detached uh, five-bedroom property. You have uh, one detached four-bedroom property, and then you have um, uh, three-bedroom properties, one pair of semi-detached, and a terrace of three. So I think you know, exercising your judgment, uh, Councillor Osborne. I think you know there is a mix there, and certainly there is a, a number of larger properties, but equally there is a. Predominant number of smaller units too. Councillor Osborne, your third question. <coughs> I have uh, there again. Obviously, it's disappointing to see that there's no element of two-bedroomed properties, which I I would understand that there would be a need in a village of this size. But however, um, yeah, just this is just for clarification. Um, on your report, you've got um, on bullet point two point five, you've got plot one is proposed to be a four-bedroom dwelling. And then on 2.8, you've got plot one is proposed to be a five-bedroom dwelling. I assume from your presentation that it's five bedrooms and not four. This is, uh, this is on page 19, anyway, the first one, 2.5. Can you answer that? Yes, yeah, apologies for that. Um, I can just confirm plot one would be a, a four-bedroom dwelling as per the plans, proposed plans. Apologies. Four and not five. Four and not five, yes. Thank you. So there's no five dwelling, but um, no, there's four. There is a five dwelling, that is a plot seven. Okay. The plot okay. one is a four bedroom dwelling. Apologies for the confusion. Thank you. Um, I think I've got next Councillor Busby. 
Yes, Chair. Um, could we have a look at slide uh, 22, please, and then moving on to 31? For, for me, the, um, the key here is that actually there are already properties on the site. Um, so it's not open parkland, it's, it's like a redevelopment of an existing site. This is what's proposed, but then if you move on to slide 31, this is the existing, and, and if you go on to 32, you can see that the existing bungalows are hardly visible uh, on that site. So they don't have a, uh, a negative impact on the parkland, in my view. But if you imagine those four buildings, two storeys, they would appear about the same kind of height as the tops of those trees. So they would have an impact on the parkland. And policy CN06 says that development affecting the setting of a listed building is justified in terms of causing the minimum possible impact to the heritage asset. So, to me, the simple way around this is that we should have bungalows, I know the chairman will love this, bungalows on this site rather than two-storey buildings. I wouldn't object to there being two, three, four, five, whatever can produce the maximum re return uh, for, you, for you guys for the benefit of the school. And I think it is important that we do look at this as providing uh, funds to keep our heritage assets, a valuable heritage assets, in, in good shape. Um, it's just how we go about it. If it was bungalows, I'd probably be in favour. If it's two-storey, I think we're doing more harm than good. But thank you, but that's not the proposal that's before us, unfortunately. No. Very well. Uh, Councillor Norman. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, my, my apologies if this is in the report, but um, I remember from the, from the slides that were shown, um, part of the development area was covering a bit where there, is, um, there are trees protected by a tree, tree preservation order. Uh, just wondering, in the proposal, are the trees going to be affected in any way? Like, are they going to be removed or pruned or chopped down in any way? Just wondering. I think you can answer that. So the um, trees protected by tree preservation orders are highlighted in green. Um, it's mostly in the belt uh, along Bury Road, and there are a few um, sporadic ones within the parkland. Um, none would be removed as part of the proposal. Um, there would be a few trees removed, um, the existing bund behind Claremont House. Um, there's been an arboricultural report submitted at in support of the application. Um, this has been assessed by the council's tree officer and um, he's raised uh, no objections subject to the uh, replacement uh, landscape uh, planting, which we can uh, secure by way of conditions. So uh, it's not proposed to remove any uh, tree protection of the trees. Thank and you. in the yeah. conditions, there's a tree protection measures that are noted. Yes. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Or oh, debate, actually. Yeah. Um, Councillor Parker, and I'll come to Councillor Davis. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, just a point of clarification, um, if Alex could, please. Um, uh, paragraph 1.3, page 18. Uh, the application site lies outside of the built-up area boundary, um, etc., etc. It's considered to lie within the settlement pattern of the village amongst and adjacent to existing dwellings. Um, uh, that seems to uh, contradict para 3.9 on 21, um, that says the site is located to the southeast of Bretnam, uh, and as such, the proposal does not demonstrate a close functional relationship. So, um, could I just have some clarification on that? Um, um, 
Uh, yes, the uh, close functional relationship to the uh, to the built-up area boundary is referred to in um, in 3.9, and um, in, in terms of engaging uh, uh, policy uh, CS11, um, uh, my yeah my general assessment is um, it's within the existing settlement uh, pattern to uh, to that area of, uh, of Bury Road, that area of the parish, if if you will, but um, the village is defined by the uh, existing built-up area boundary. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Councillor Davis. Yeah, uh, that partly answered um, one of the questions I have, but I, I have concerns um, in, in the report, in your conclusion, and, and, and the balance of, of both C, uh, CS02, CS3, CS11, and CS15. And, and I think even in your report, you you um, accept that it's virtually contrary to CS15. So I'm trying to work out the balance because we've, we've already heard that there's gonna be no benefit to the local need, no, because there is none, but we have no assessment. Um, the, the parish has made it very clear that they see no benefit locally at all. Um, it's partly outside of the built up area boundary. There's, there is some building on existing parkland, not just the thing. So I'm just, Curious as to how you see that the, the benefits outweigh the harm. Can, can you answer that? Yes. The the, um, the only benefits that were outlined was uh, to the locals uh, on the improvements <coughs> that possibly could come to the school, but not in the local housing need. Yeah. Yes, right. Can you answer? Yes, in terms of the planning balance, um, I mean um, it's uh, it's three pronged in terms of the uh, the MPPF, uh, environmental, social, and economic. Um, I mean there would be a uh, a certain degree of um, environmental harm in terms of the uh, the scale of the buildings um, uh, and where they are, um, but um, it, it's felt that that is offset um, in terms of the. Uh, uh, the monies which would be secured for the upkeep of the uh, historic buildings, and um, there's a uh, an amount of uh, social benefit in terms of the uh, supply of additional housing in terms of our housing um, housing figures as well. Um, so um, that's um, that's as I've tried to sum up in my uh, report. Yeah, um, hopefully that's clear. Just one more point of clarification, and it's not necessarily for the office; it might be for someone else, but. How much public access is there to this park? How much? Well, uh, how much know. public access to this area? I don't believe that's a, a question that the officers can answer, oh. albeit obviously acknowledging the the comments that the um, applicant made in respect of the facilities that were available to members of the public. So there must be some access for that to happen, mustn't there? Yeah. Um, members, I could, with your permission, ask the applicant if he can answer that specific point only. Members, do you wish me to put that to the applicant? That's a general failure? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, could you just answer that, if you could just come forward? Yeah. You need to come to the mic, because otherwise it's not picked up for, for the re record. You heard the question, you don't want it rephrased, do you? No, I do, thank you. Um, there is significant public access. There is a footpath that runs through the, the park, which is used widely by the village um, and people visiting the area. Um, in fact, that, that footpath and the, the tracks have been highlighted recently by the parish council um, to, to encourage their use. A new signage, I think, has been put up. I might be incorrect, but I, th I think that's the case. Uh, every year we host a fireworks night, which the, the entire village is, is uh, welcome to, and, and that's happened for many years. The Breton and Cricket Club has played there for over 100 years. Um, the swimming pool is used uh, whenever the weather is clement enough for swimming. And in the past, the squash courts have been used by pub the public as well and would be again in the future with renovation. For the Sorry, the parkland. Uh, well, I'd say there is a public footpath that runs straight through the parkland, so there is public access. Thank you. I think that's answered it adequately. You're, you're happy with that response, sort of? Yeah, thank you. Uh, any other comments, members? Uh, Councillor Parker. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'm not really sure um, that it's one necessarily that officers can answer, but I'm just curious uh, to note throughout the report that uh, much is made um, of the impact upon, uh, and quite rightly, the, the, the listed heritage asset um, within the, the grounds itself. 
but there doesn't appear to be any mention of the listed asset that is immediately opposite the, uh, the development itself. I'm just wondering if the officer has any comment about that. Um, I think we ought to ask the heritage officer to <coughs> answer that, if that's okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Chair. No, no reference made. Pound Farm, I think you mean. Um, I think because morphologically, Brettenham is fairly strung out. And there are little, there are little knots of development and and individual buildings and spaces, and we felt that by building opposite and utilising the existing belt of trees that are there, and it's a fairly deep copse of trees, the the intervisibility would be contained. There'd be very limited intervisibility. Um, the setting of the farmhouse itself wouldn't really be upset. It would be affected. There would be an impact, but that impact doesn't equate to harm. Um, because the, there, is a, there is a change to the view from the house towards that sort of green and vice versa, looking the other way, there would be a change. But we didn't think that that change amounted to any harm because of the, the, the arrangement of buildings in that settlement already. Um, so, so while the building might sit in, in I suppose, relative isolation, it, it, and, and the setting does contribute to that, that aspect of the setting which contributes wouldn't be detrimentally affected by being altered. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's got another question. Please do. Yeah, if I can respond to that then, uh, Mr Chairman, I wonder if it's possible to, um, to put the graphic back on the screen uh, that show, uh, yeah, okay, that one will do. Um, uh, and so what we're being asked to consider is the, the or, or to give weight to, is the effect of the harm uh, on the asset that is all the way down there, but not, I don't say we discount, but we're not being asked to consider uh, to give weight to the asset that is immediately adjacent to. And that, I've, uh, that that's, that's, that's problematic for me, I have to say, but that's just a little bit of comment. Right. Yeah. Can, you, can you help on that point and perhaps help him out? <laughs> Sorry, yes, thank you. The setting of the various assets is different, and the setting of the hall includes all the, all the land around it, all the parkland, and probably beyond, because the meaning of the hall when it was built was to be an impressive structure in the landscape, and, and it, it, it created a formal landscape in which people could appreciate that building. The farmhouse, conversely, is, is a building built for functional purposes, albeit this is a very high-status farmhouse, built for functional purposes, and the setting would be different. It doesn't mean it's any greater or any less, but the setting, because of the meaning of the building, is different. Um, the, the meaning of the hall is, is very high status. Look at us. We've got a huge house and we've got fantastic parkland. We're very fashionable. 200 years prior to that, the house was built on the other side of the road, uh, and it was concerned with status, but it's concerned with the functions of the, the house and its outbuildings, I suppose, much of, many of which have gone. And so the settings of each are, are discrete and it's very different in terms of their magnitude as much as um, the, the, the arrangement. And, and, and I wouldn't want to define where the settings of each are. They certainly overlap as well. The settings of each certainly overlap. But the, if we were to simply um, argue in terms of the area of the setting of the farmhouse, that would be significantly uh, limited less um, than, I think, the setting of the hall. Thank you. Hopefully that full answer helps you. Uh, any other comments? Councillor Barrett? Thank you. Um, Can you get lean a little bit now? Mm, yeah. um, I just wondered if you, I could address a, a comment to you as a well, question um, a little bit about the, the fabric of the hall now and it sounds like you have been in touch and, and looked at, at the condition of the, the and of course heritage assets are incredibly problematic for maintaining them in the, the, um, the way that they deserve um, what is your opinion of um, the conditions that have been talked about uh, in, the, in the paper the, the, um, the improvements and maintenance how long do you think that would allow a period of grace before you're on the, the constant um, uh, round again for more improvements? Yes, a um, bit, bit of a tricky one. <laughs> um, uh, historic buildings do require constant maintenance and parkland, as the head teacher said. 
Um, there, there is, a, main, there is a, a requirement to maintain these things. We do have duties under the Act um, to ensure that they don't deteriorate. And of course, when a building is used, it wouldn't deteriorate, we hope, to, to, a, to an extent where the roof falls in or something. But things like boundary walls do deteriorate on a regular basis, and so ongoing maintenance is required. But I, I wouldn't like to put a figure or a, or a period of time um, to, to, um, to a cycle of maintenance. But needless to say, uh, the, the cycle of maintenance, I suppose, for listed buildings is ongoing. But I don't know when and if um, the applicants might come back for, for further funding. I, I really don't know. Thank you. Is it another question? Yep. One further um, question I have. Are, are there any green credentials that um, uh, are being put forward as um, in the, the house building um, plans? Or, or? Um, no, we don't have any details of any green elements. Um, no, simple answer, really. I would think it would certainly be all the latest technology and uh, the up-to-date uh, rules and regulations would have to apply there, wouldn't they? Well, would which which would pick up some of the green... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So building regs will pick up... Some, uh, well, that's debatable. Uh, part Partel now, it, it, it is quite a high, certainly a higher standard than it has been in the past, um, which is certainly a, a higher benchmark than probably it would have been when the core strategy was being drafted. Any other comments, members? No? Uh, right. Uh, Councillor Parker? Uh, well, in the absence of no other um, comments, uh, Mr Chairman, I think we, we're kind of getting to the, uh, to the nub of it then in that case. So um, uh, my, my thoughts on, on listening to uh, all the comments all the way around is that this, this uh, proposal is, uh, it's not particularly controversial uh, in, in any way. For me, personally, it's not sufficiently controversial um, to, uh, to warrant anything other than supporting the application. Um, the, uh, you, you know, when we talk about sustainable development, um, as, as the officer has mentioned, uh, we're looking at economic, social and environmental aspects. Uh, and from what I've heard, I am satisfied that this development actually um, satisfies all three of those um, all three of those prongs. In so far as um, uh, th there there is a, a social objective, there is a public benefit. Mr. Griffith has already explained um, that actually this is used by members of the public, um, or, or the, the the site in question is used by members of the public. Um, and it sounds to me as though um, the school is an intrinsic part. Um, of the fabric, the society, locally. So I think that um, we, 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 we have a social uh, benefit. Um, uh, the, this development is not a speculative development. Um, uh, from what I'm reading and from what I'm hearing, uh, the proceeds will be reinvested to support a very important existing heritage asset um, but to support economic growth as well, uh, looking after the, um, uh, the existing employment that, that, that goes on site and ensuring that future. So I'm satisfied that there is an economic uh, objective being met here. Um, and also, as far as environment is concerned, this might be a little more tenuous, but, but overriding, above everything else, the principle of development is already established. There is already development here. So what is being proposed uh, is, is a replacement of something that is, that is already there. And uh, it's, it's purely subjective, but in my opinion, the application that's before us actually provides, or would provide, an improvement uh, to what exists currently. I take on board um, uh, uh, what Councillor Busby said there about the, the, the street scene, but actually we're looking at it from completely the opposite direction. So I think it was an unfair representation. So for me, um, uh, with all of those things combined, um, and given that we can only judge the case before us uh, on material fact and planning policy, I think actually uh, we have no other option but to um, support officer recommendation to approve uh, the application before us, Mr Chairman, and that is a proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Adrian Osborne, are you seconded in this? <laughs> yes, thank you, Mr so Chairman. Yes, I'd, thank you. I'd be glad to, uh, uh, to second this proposal. Uh, once again, uh, my um, thanks to the planning officers who have been with, involved with this. I think it was a good presentation. It showed everything that was wanted. I concur completely with, with Councillor Parker. This is a, a, a situation where uh, the um, uh, conditions have been put on there 
and if they apply those conditions, I feel that you had the best judgment at all on, on this application. Thank you. Thank you. Um, right, members. Check. No one else wishes to speak. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to. Um, is there any other comments? Uh, Councillor Davis. Yeah, um, while accepting what Councillor Parker says, I, I think there is a loss of parkland in addition to um, into the land that's already been built on. That's, that is in the, in the, in the um, application. So there will be a loss of parkland. Yeah, I do have concerns about um, the enabling development and that really the only beneficiaries, and it could even be short term, is, is the school rather than the whole community. So I, I just wanted to point those out. Um, and, and finally, if, if it is granted, I, I would like to ensure that, um, that the Suffolk Fire and Rescue um, suggestion about an, a hydrant nearer the actual site is, is uh, put in, whether that's as a condition or part of the planning uh, requirements. Just that part of the conditions. Uh, can we add that in if that's necessary? Can, can you tell us, uh, candidate, page 16, paragraph. Under fire and rescue, right? <coughs> fire and rescue. Have you found it? I have. I'm, I'm not sure that they're necessarily <coughs> recommending that the hydrant be, be moved or that a new hydrant be provided. I think what they're doing is noting um, the distance. Um, they're recommending that there is provision of fire sprinkler systems in the buildings. And that certainly, I think, is, is, um, is commendable. Um, I should imagine it's probably covered by building links anyway, but I think if, if members feel it prudent, we'll, we'll add it on anyway in terms of conditions. Uh, well, do, do you feel it's necessary if it's already covered in the sprinkler system and uh, that which actually is very good because um, certainly to get sprinkler systems in these nowadays isn't that easy. <coughs> so I think it must have been looked at very closely by the fire department. It, 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 indeed, yeah. my, my personal preference would be not to. Um, it, it's, yeah. it's members' choice and decision whether they want to carry that duplication through or not. Right. I, I think uh, uh, you've heard the two different sort of uh, comments on it. Does the proposer and seconder wish to add this on, or are you happy with the provisions that are already there? No, it's Councillor Parker, uh, you proposed it in the second. Uh, um, the officers have said they think that it's uh, covered enough in the recommendations. Uh, Chair, I'm, I'm, I'm um, perfectly prepared to, to, to accept what the officer is telling us. I'm, I'm just a little bit, I don't, you know, I'm just a bit confused about what we're talking about. I mean, it seems to me what we're talking about is a sprinkler system within the houses. Nothing to do with the, um, uh, with, 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 it's, it's to do with, you know, a modern fire system. And I'm, yeah. I'm quite certain that, as you quite rightly said, will be covered under building regs in yeah. any event. Thank you. And your uh, Councillor Osborne, you're, you're, you're happy with that? Or? Yes, thank you, Mr Chairman. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. If the officer uh, yeah. uh, requires that, then fair enough. Right, so the proposal stands as it, as it was. The officer's recommendation as it is has been proposed and seconded. Any other comments? Councillor Busby? Oh, can I just point you to the top of page 23, please? Just bear with me. Yep. Paragraph. I mean, I mentioned it before, policy CN06. Yep, yep. uh, it's unambiguous. It says that it has to cause the minimum possible impact. Now, we know that there are potentially two alternatives here, one is, or three alternatives. One is to do nothing, which doesn't benefit anybody. Secondly is to produce kind of replacement type buildings, i.e. bungalows. And thirdly is to put in what's proposed. Now, what propo is proposed is not the minimum. It is a lot worse than having single-storey buildings. Therefore, we'd be going against a specific one of our safe policies. I'm not against development on the site. I'm against a development that causes more harm than it needs to. Thank you. I'll get the Chief Officer to come uh, Rather than go into a discussion about the status of CNO6, its age, and how consistent it might be with national policy, I don't think that's a stone we necessarily need to kick over, because actually what you've got in respect of the heritage comments um, that officers have endorsed 
is that actually the proposal before you is causing the minimum level of harm. It, it is effectively trifling in, in its nature at, at you know, what might be considered a spectrum of harm. And it is considered to accord with the development plan <coughs> aspect of its heritage policies. Yeah, this has already been rehearsed uh, earlier during the meeting, I think. Uh, unless you've got any new points or comments. No, everyone's uh, finished with their views. Right then, members, it's been proposed by <coughs> Councillor Parker and seconded by Councillor Osborne that we accept the officer's recommendation as on your papers in front of you. All those in favour, please show. Seven. Seven. Those against? Four. That is carried. Thank you very much, members. Uh, I think we've come to the end. Um, is yeah. Chair, just, just, just to say, I mean, it would be just always interesting to know when we, uh, when we pass these uh, right. or make these approvals, have we got any indication of when, you know, when we might expect development to, um, to commence Command. at all? That, that's actually quite a good point, and we perhaps should try and remember members between us to ask the applicants how long. Um, but with your consent, how quickly is this likely to be enacted? Thank you. So, so sooner rather than later, members. I think the view on Thailand was. Um, right. I think we're now at the end of the meeting. Just to remind them, uh, we usually ask at this point, is there any members who know that they won't be able to make the site inspections? No? Uh, we'll... Uh, next Wednesday, yeah? Mr Chair, can I just ask a, a question here about the site visits? Uh, are we likely to be all day on these site visits or? It'd certainly be all morning. We're hoping to start <coughs> early and I think we were hoping to go to Glensford first um, and then move out to the others. Um, but we're hoping to have it done by lunchtime, one o'clock. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Um, so, you yeah, um, I will be substituting for uh, Councillor Hinton on the 19th as well. Right, so you'll be included then. Might meet them next Wednesday because I've got previous engagements. Uh, um, but I know Brantham very you know well. It. Okay, yeah, that's Wednesday fine. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll make a note of that. And Councillor uh, Jan Osborne, your sub and for sewer is Councillor Ayers. Um, if she, we don't know whether she make it. We'll send a copy to her, um, <coughs> and perhaps you'll include Councillor Jan Osborne. So then we'll cover. Hold on, Chair. Let's just point that. Uh, Unless I know that Councillor Osborne will be substituting on the next committee, because Councillor Osborne is not a member of the right. formal committee. Okay, so then we can't have a We thing. can't do that unless I'm formally notified that Councillor Osborne will be at the next meeting as well. Right. Can you check? Oh, Mr Chairman, and if um, that is the case where I need to start up again, uh, then I'll attend the site visit. That's very helpful. Thank you. Right, members, declare the meeting closed at 11.04. Thank you.